Hi, welcome to this new video in the series on Bluetooth Low Energy Technology. My name is Mohamed Afani, and in the previous video, we covered the advertisement mode in BLE. And in today's video, we'll be covering the other mode that a BLE device can operate in, connection mode. Some of the questions we'll address in this video include, what are connections, and why are they important, and how do devices connect with each other? And finally, we'll look at some of the connection parameters that are used for managing a connection. So what are connections in BLE? And what makes them so important? Connections are a way to establish persistent data communication that is synchronized and allows data to be exchanged between two devices. We've talked about advertisements before and how they're a one-way street in terms of the direction of the data transfer from the broadcaster or the peripheral to the devices that are scanning for these advertising packets. Connections, on the other hand, enable bi-directional data transfer between two devices. They also have other advantages, such as lower power consumption that can be achieved through adjustment of the connection parameters, as well as higher data transfer speeds. Before we get into the details of how connections work, let's go over some important terminology. We already learned about the central and peripheral roles, and these exist before a connection is established. However, once we have a connection and the central device connects to the peripheral, the central becomes known as the master, and the peripheral known as the slave. The master has the responsibility of managing the connection and having the ultimate say in the connection parameters. Now that we understand what connections are and why they're important, let's take a look at how they work. It all starts with the peripheral sending out the advertisement packets, allowing the central to discover it. Once the central device discovers the peripheral, it may decide to initiate a connection. Now the central is the only device that can initiate the connection. The peripheral's role is simply to advertise its ability to accept connections. In Bluetooth 5, connections can now be initiated on the secondary advertisement channels. But for sake of simplicity, let's focus on connections that are established on the primary channels. So the peripheral starts advertising on each of the primary channels with a type of advertisement that tells the discoverer that it can accept a connection. The central now discovers one of these advertisements and decides to establish a connection with the peripheral. So it sends back on the same RF channel a connection request packet. At this point, the connection is considered to be created. Now after a certain period of time called the connection interval, the now called master sends a data packet to the slave. And once the slave receives this data packet, it decides to send back another data packet. And at this point, the connection is now considered established. A connection request packet looks like this. It includes a few important parameters that are needed to keep the connection synchronized and persistent between the two devices, such as the connection interval, the slave latency, the supervision timeout, the channel map, and the hop sequence. Now let's look at each of these connection parameters in more detail. First, we have the connection interval parameter which defines when a connection event occurs. Now at each connection event, the master starts by sending a packet to the slave. The slave then responds with a data packet and includes any data that it needs to communicate back to the master. Now in the event that it doesn't have any data to send back to the master, the slave is still required to send back something, so it simply sends back an empty packet. The connection interval parameter ranges from 7.5 milliseconds to 4 seconds in increments of 1.25 milliseconds. Next, we have a parameter called the slave latency. We just mentioned that at each connection event, and after the slave receives a packet from the master, it needs to respond with another packet, with one exception. And this is where the slave latency parameter comes in. Now, the slave latency defines the number of connection events that a slave can skip. The master still wakes up and sends a packet at each of the connection events, but the slave simply ignores the event and can stay asleep. This allows us to keep the slave asleep for longer periods of time when no data is available to send back to the master, but it would still be able to have quicker data transfers when necessary. 
A slave latency value of zero means that the slave will not skip any connection events and will always wake up to receive and respond to data packets from the master. Another important connection parameter is the supervision timeout. This is the period of time since the last data exchange from the other device at which the connection is considered lost. This value ranges from 100 milliseconds to 32 seconds in increments of 10 milliseconds. It's important to note that there's a relationship and restrictions on both the slave latency and the supervision timeout values. Now the supervision timeout needs to satisfy the following equation in relation to the slave latency, given that the maximum slave latency is at the value of 500. As we mentioned before, during a connection, 37 of the 40 RF channels are used for communication and exchanging data between the connected devices. Now each connection event occurs on a different RF channel. The channel map defines the channels that are used for this frequency hopping mechanism. And this list of channels is defined by the master in the connection request packet, as we saw earlier. The channel map allows the connected devices to avoid certain channels that may be noisy or have a lot of interference from other devices in the area. Which brings us to the channel hop increment which is the value used to determine the next channel that devices will tune to for the upcoming connection event. For example, in the case we started at channel 0 and we had a hop increment of 5, then the next channel to be used will be channel number 5, and the next will be 10 and so on. If the hop channel calculated goes beyond channel 36, then it rolls over and circles back and continues counting from the beginning of the map. Now if the channel calculated is not included in the channel map, then it is mapped to a different included channel using a specific formula. In the next video, we'll talk about another key concept in BLE, Generic Attribute Profile, or GAT for short, which defines how the data is exposed and exchanged between two connected devices. To learn more about Elysis, provider of the world's most advanced Bluetooth analyzers, visit elysis.com. Have a need for training or consulting services? Then contact our training partner, Novelbits, at novelbits.io. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and learned a little bit more about BLE. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.